So today we're going to be testing out gaming on the brand new M4 Pro chip housed inside this tiny Mac Mini. So the Mac that we're testing out today has 12 CPU cores, 8 of which are performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. We're going to be using 24 gigabytes of RAM and 16 GPU cores, so this is going to be the lower end version of the M4 Pro. And today we're going to be testing out 12 games running on this machine. So we're going to be playing some AAA macOS native ARM titles. We'll be testing out some console emulation running through the native ARM chip. We'll be playing some Windows games running through the Parallels Virtual Machine software. And we'll be testing out a bunch of high-end Windows DirectX 12 games running through D2D Metal and Crossover. So the first game on the list is Baldur's Gate 3. And this is one of my favorite games of all time and probably the best game that came out of 2023. And here we have the Mac port of the game which has been optimized for Apple Silicon hardware. Unfortunately, the latest patch 7 has introduced some regressions in performance, especially on the Mac side. And this isn't necessarily indicative of what the real performance of this game is like. However, we're still managing to get decent frame rates even at 1440p. And here we're playing at the medium graphics preset. And here in Act 1, we're getting a frame rate of about 45 to 50 FPS. However, anyone familiar with the game will know that the real technical test is going to be running the game in Act 3. Here you can see that memory usage is approaching 10 gigabytes, and we're still getting about 40 to 45 FPS, which isn't too bad. The whole of Act 3 is full of NPCs, especially in the Baldur's Gate city, and it's impressive that the M4 Pro can handle this at such a high resolution and graphics setting. So next we're looking at the massively multiplayer online game World of Warcraft. So World of Warcraft was one of the very first AAA native ARM Mac ports and remains one of the best optimized titles for the system. Obviously I'm not able to test this properly so I used to be a World of Warcraft player but I gave up that habit a long time ago and unfortunately I can't test out something like a raid or any demanding late game content. However you can see here we're running in Stormwind at the moment at the auction house. Here the resolution is set to 4k and the quality preset is set to 5 and render scaling is set to 50%. And here we're getting a frame rate of over 100 FPS within the auction house. And here we've turned up the settings even higher. We've set the quality mode to 10 and render scale to 84%. And here we're getting anything ranging from about 70 to 110 FPS. Obviously this isn't a test for like a 25 man raid, but it does show you that there's a lot of scope for performance in this game. So next we're looking at the game Rust, which a lot of people requested. Unfortunately, the Mac port of this game is gonna be a little bit disappointing. So I'm pretty sure we set this at 1440p, even though the metal HUD is saying we're running this at higher than this. And we have the graphical preset set to medium. The game is very stuttery and you can see the RAM usage is approaching 20 gigabytes which is kind of insane for a game like this. It shouldn't be anywhere nearly as high. To ensure I was running at the right resolution, I put it into windowed mode and I joined an online server just to see how it would run. And to be fair, we are getting about 40 to 60 FPS at medium graphics settings at 1440p, which isn't too bad. However, just be aware that this is gonna use a lot of RAM and it's gonna be very stuttery as well. So next up, we're looking at the game Honkai Star Rail. So there is no Mac port of this game, despite the fact that there are mobile versions running on iPhone and iPad. There isn't yet an Apple Silicon native binary so in order to get this game running on a Mac we're actually going to play this through a Parallels virtual machine. And what this does is that it allows us to run a windowed version of Windows 11 ARM as a virtual machine. And even though this is actually consuming half of the CPU cores and half of the RAM of the computer, we're able to get decent frame rates when playing games. So Parallels can support games running up to DirectX 11, which is what Honkai Star Rail uses. And if you have enough system resources like on this Mac Mini with the M4 Pro and 24 gigabytes of RAM, you can basically brute force any kind of limitations of the machine and play some exclusive games. So there are a couple of other ways to play Honkai Star Rail. One is the yet another anime game launcher. Another is running this through crossover, but I didn't have any luck this time. Often what I find with these live service games is that if you can run it through parallels, this might be a more reliable way because any kind of changes to the launcher will often break wine implementations. And if you can get parallels working, then this might be the better option for long-term usage. Here gameplay was pretty seamless. I was able to play with the controller and it looks like we're getting 60 FPS locked running at 1440p. So performance isn't perfect, there are stutters here and there. Just remember, this is a Windows x86 64-bit game being translated through Microsoft's Prism translation layer to ARM, and we're running this in a virtual machine. 
so it's not too bad that we're able to get 16 FPS at the max graphics settings at 1440p. And Parallels isn't just good for high-end games, you can also play older games too, which often works better than trying to play it through something like Crossover. That's because Crossover and Wine doesn't run older 32-bit games very well, so here we're playing Peggle Extreme, a game that uses Direct Draw 7, being played pretty much flawlessly through Windows 11 ARM on Parallels. And getting this to work is pretty straightforward, just install Windows 11 ARM, install the Windows version of Steam, and then you can play a lot of games that aren't necessarily available on Mac OS. If you want to learn how to do this, then click the link at the top of the video description. Next, we're going to be taking a brief look at PlayStation 3 emulation using the emulator called RPCS3. So yes, it is possible to turn your Mac into a PS3, and you can often run games better on a Mac using emulation than on original hardware. So I'm not able to show you how to get these games actually acquired onto your Mac. What you should be doing is ripping the original PlayStation 3 discs that you own, but it's very much worth doing because we're able to get very playable frame rates. I'm playing this game on the native resolution and we have a gamepad attached to my Xbox Series X controller and it manages to work very well. So if you want to find out how to do PlayStation 3 emulation, I'll leave a link to my tutorial in the description. Next up, we're looking at Grand Theft Auto 5. And this is the Windows version of the game. There is no Mac port. We're running it through the crossover translation layer, which incorporates Wine, D3D Metal, and allows the game to be played at very playable frame rates. So this is running at 14 40p at default graphics settings and we're achieving over 100 fps so the main downside of running this game through crossover is the fact that we can't play online and that's due to a recently introduced patch which added the anti-cheat called battle eye and this prevented any gamers using translation layers like those on the steam deck or through the mac through crossover from joining multiplayer games now it is possible to actually play the online multiplayer using parallels and the latest version of windows 11 arm canary i'll leave a link to that in the description but it does run very slow However, if you just wanted to play the single player version of GTA 5, then you'll do no better than running it through crossover. Next up, we're playing the classic open world role-playing game, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Again, we're playing the Windows version of the game, run through the translation layer crossover, and we're able to get very good frame rates We're running this at 1440p at the highest graphic setting called Ultra. So when you're running this through the translation layer crossover, you need to apply a few fixes. Make sure you install the cross tie in order to get dialogue audio working correctly. I'll leave a link to my video tutorial to this in the description. Now this game is locked to 60 FPS, and at this graphics preset, we're pretty much hitting 50 to 60 FPS. So if you want wanted that pure 60 experience, just drop this down to the high graphics preset at 1440p and it'll run beautifully. Next, we're looking at the highly requested car simulator game called Beam MG. We're running the Windows version of this game through crossover once again, and we have the graphics setting set to 1080p at the very high preset. Here, I've turned on the AI traffic, and it's not doing too badly. It takes a few minutes for the game to kind of warm up, caching all the animations and shaders. But we're able to get about 45 to 55 FPS at this graphics preset. Big thanks to everyone who helped me figure out actually what to do in this game, because I have no idea how to play this properly, but it seems like a very cool simulation type game. You can choose dozens of different vehicles. It has very accurately modeled damage, so I couldn't figure out why I can steer left here. It's because I basically destroyed the front driving shaft. Anyway, cool to see a very requested game being run on Apple Silicon hardware. Next up, we're playing the game Hitman World of Assassination, which is the amalgam of all of the new modern Hitman games from Hitman 1, 2, and 3, all combined into a single game. Again, this is a Windows title being run through Crossover Preview. This is DirectX 12 being translated onto Metal, and it manages to work surprisingly well. Here we're playing at default settings at 1440p, and despite there being so many characters on the screen at once, we're still able to get a pretty smooth 60 to 80 FPS one playing. So next up, we're looking at Diablo 2 Resurrected. So Diablo 2 originally was on Mac back in the day, simultaneously released with Windows. However, this remaster was made Windows only, so in order to play this game, we're going to be running this through Crossover, through the Battle.net launcher. This has the sheen of new animations and graphics running through DirectX 12, but if we press the G key, we can see the original game back in its pixelated glory. So anyway, even with its fancy graphics, we're able to get a decent 60 to 80 FPS running at 1440p at very high, which is the max graphics preset. So the final game we're looking at is Tekken 8. So this is the Windows version of the game being run through crossover, and we're able to play this at 1440p high. This automatically applies an FSR 1.0 upscaling up to 60%. And thankfully, even with these settings, we're able to hit that 60 frame rate mark. Now the gameplay isn't going to be absolutely perfect because there are going to be animation stutters here 
out there. In theory, these should slowly cache over time and you should have a smoother experience once you've been playing for a little while. If you're running this through crossover preview rather than regular crossover, then you should be able to play online multiplayer as well. You'll still get caching and stuttering, so I wouldn't consider this a perfect experience, but it's cool to see this game playable on the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro. So anyway, that was my look at all of these games running on Apple Silicon hardware on the M4 Pro on the Mac Mini. I'm going to be looking at more M4 chips in the very near future, streaming and making videos too. So if you have any game suggestions, then please make sure to leave a comment or join the live stream. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.